December 1945 in Poland. Inside the convent, the nuns are singing praises to God. However, a young novice Teresa, overhears someone from a distance moaning, or screaming. Bothered with what she heard, Teresa slips out after the ceremony and walks across the snowy countryside. She reaches a small village and is greeted by a group of children. The older kid promises to help her in finding a doctor if she gives him money, so Teresa obliges. The kid leads her to a hospital full of injured soldiers. Overwhelmed, Teresa tries to approach a doctor but gets shut down because he's overwhelmed himself. Teresa approaches Mathilde, a French doctor, and asks for her help. However, Mathilde turns her down, saying the hospital is only for French patients. She leads Teresa out the door. Later, Mathilde goes for a smoke after an operation. From the window, she sees Teresa kneeling in the snow, praying in front of the establishment. She decides to help the desperate nun. Sneaking with Teresa into the convent at night, Mathilde discovers where the noise is coming from. It's a pregnant woman thrown out by her family, moaning in pain as she's nursed by the nuns. Quickly inspecting the hesitant pregnant woman, Mathilde discovers she has a breech baby. This means the baby is lying feet first. Mathilde decides to perform surgery. Putting the woman under anesthetics, Mathilde performs the painstaking surgery in the dark with little equipment. Still, she successfully pulls out the baby. Later, Mathilde tells Maria she'll want to check on the mother and the child tomorrow. However, Maria is hesitant and acts coldly toward Mathilde. The good doctor tells Maria that she'll have blood on her hands if the two die tomorrow. Maria pauses. She tells Mathilde to come back during the dawn prayer. Mathilde drives away just before sunrise. Arriving at the hospital, Mathilde heads straight back to work without sleep. She's late and gets a mouthful from the head surgeon, Samuel. Eventually, he sends her away, telling her to get some sleep or coffee. Mathilde heads out and sleeps soundly. Meanwhile, Teresa gets a mouthful from the abbess for breaking the rules and sneaking out. She tells Teresa that although she's still grief-stricken from the death of their sister, it's not an excuse to become disobedient to the convent's laws. Teresa gets punished with a week-long stay in her cell and a vow of silence. During the dawn prayer, Maria excuses herself, meets Mathilde at the door, and sneaks her into the convent. Mathilde gives the woman a shot of penicillin and asks to show her scar. However, the woman is hesitant, ashamed almost. Wanting to see the baby, Mathilde learns from Maria that he was already taken back to the woman's pious aunt. As they leave, Maria hides Mathilde after seeing the group of nuns pacing across the hallway. Seeing that the coast is clear, Maria and Mathilde walk out of hiding. Suddenly, Anna, one of the nuns faints, prompting Maria and Mathilde to run to her aid. Mathilde sees the outline of Anna's pregnant belly on her clothing. Abbess arrives and summons Mathilde to her office as Maria leads Anna somewhere. Abbess explains to Mathilde that the Russians, their supposed liberators from the persecuting Germans, burst into their convent and ravished the nuns. Maria reveals that there are six pregnant nuns. Mathilde offers to send a Red Cross midwife. However, Abbess argues the nuns will be evicted, shamed, and eventually die because no one will take them in anymore. Mathilde tells them she'll report the situation to her superiors, forcing the stubborn nuns to agree to her deal. However, it has to be Mathilde who'll help them. Later in the evening, Mathilde hangs out with Samuel over drinks. During their discussion, Mathilde reveals that she came from a working-class family of die-hard communist parents. Meanwhile, Samuel was an only son in an upper-class family. However, his parents died in the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. The conversation turns dark quickly, so Samuel dismisses the air. He asks Mathilde to dance with him. Afterward, Samuel sends her home and tries to kiss her. Mathilde is hesitant but eventually begins to laugh at the ridiculousness of the situation. They sleep together. At the convent, Anna struggles to reconcile her faith with the terrible events. Meanwhile, Maria tells Zofia that her child has been taken to her aunt. Later, Abbess tells the nuns that Mathilde will be examining some of them. Inspecting the nuns, Mathilde realizes the gravity of the situation, 
as some of them cannot fathom what happened to them. Eventually, Matilde asks Maria to help her help them, so Maria goes out to talk to the nuns. However, they all left. Matilde is disappointed as she took a risk coming there after all. She leaves. As Matilde drives in the dark, she's suddenly stopped by Soviet officers. They harass her and try to ravish her. As Matilde desperately screams, trying to fight off the soldiers, Officer Roos arrives. The soldiers scramble in fear as the commander kicks them off of Matilde. He asks what Matilde is doing there, but terrified, she can't verbalize an answer. Roos sends her away. Matilde goes back to the convent, still reeling from the attack. Maria helps her to a room. As Maria leaves, Matilde breaks down in tears but eventually falls asleep in exhaustion. In the morning, she sees the nuns singing praises. However, they suddenly stop as the Soviet soldiers arrive to inspect the convent, suspecting them of hiding enemies. Abbess faces them. Suddenly, Matilde interrupts and tells them there's an epidemic of typhus, prompting the soldiers to leave. Afterward, Abbess begins to feel unwell. Matilde learns that the Russians ravished Abbess too. Matilde learns that Maria is also a victim. Maria tearfully recounts the events. She claims she's luckier than the other nuns because she isn't a virgin anymore. As Matilde leaves, the nuns suddenly run toward her, kissing and hugging her, pleading with her not to leave them. However, Matilde has to go to work. She arrives at the hospital and buys a cigarette from a young boy. Afterward, she gets a mouthful from the colonel. Samuel tells her he'd be really pissed if she got sent home. Later, while Matilde makes her report, Samuel asks her out. She turns him down, saying she needs to sleep. However, Samuel knows she's lying. After writing her report, Matilde cycles to the convent and continues to inspect the pregnant nuns. While examining one of the nuns, Matilde learns that the nun has a Russian fiancé who impregnated her. She tells Matilde that he fought off the other Russian soldiers and prevented them from killing everyone in the convent. Suddenly, Matilde is called to examine Abbess, who feels unwell. She learns that Abbess contracted syphilis and the disease is now in its advanced stages. However, Abbess refuses treatment. Later, Maria reveals to Matilde that even though the war is over, the nuns are still fearful of the new regime. Suddenly, they hear Irina playing the piano. While the sisters are having fun, Zofia alerts Matilde and Maria that one of the nuns unexpectedly gave birth. This nun did not know she was pregnant and didn't even know she had given birth. Maria plans on reporting the birth to Abbess so she can send it to an adopter. However, Matilde outwits her and has another plan. Since the mother nun rejected the baby, Matilde asks Zofia to breastfeed the child. Later, Maria lets Matilde borrow her dress, something she wore arriving at the convent. Maria tells Matilde that if not for the war and the horror that struck them, she would consider herself happy. On the other hand, Matilde doesn't know her happiness. Returning to the hospital, Matilde learns from the colonel that they will pack up and leave in a month. Some will return to France, and others will be stationed in Berlin. Later in the evening, Samuel tells Matilde he'll miss her. Matilde begins crying, but Samuel knows it's not about him. Despite probing her, Matilde doesn't tell Samuel anything. Annoyed, Samuel dances with another girl, trying to provoke Matilde. However, she just swigs her glass of liquor. At the convent, life seems to go by normally again. However, some pregnant nuns struggle with movement. Suddenly, one of the nuns' water broke, prompting Maria to call Matilde. Before heading back to the convent, Matilde grabs Samuel and asks him to come along with her. The two arrive, and Samuel immediately assures Maria he's there to help. The abbess meets Samuel and immediately leers at him. However, Samuel tells her he's not going to heaven and that they can discuss everything for hours, but the nuns need his help. Eventually, abbess and Maria lead him to the pregnant nuns. Samuel willingly helps the nuns. Meanwhile, Matilde checks the recently born child, Helena, named by Zofia. When Zofia leaves, Maria tells Matilde she plans on giving the child up for adoption and then finally tells Abbess about the situation. As Matilde leaves, Abbess arrives, 
sees Maria holding the baby, and asks her to come to her office. Later, Zofia sees Abbess carrying the baby in a basket as she exits the convent. Zofia runs to her in the cold snow but loses track of her. She breaks down in tears as she loses another baby. Abbess arrives at a cross in the middle of nowhere and prays for the child before leaving it in the cold. Meanwhile, Zofia cries in despair back at the convent. Maria runs to her aid. Abbess prays for forgiveness and strength while tears run down her eyes. She asks for strength to bear her heavy cross. Later, the nuns finally give birth, thanks to Matilde and Samuel. Matilde asks Maria to look for hot water and sugar, so Maria heads out. Suddenly, she hears screaming. As she runs to find the source, she sees another nun crying over the bloodied body of Zofia. She killed herself. Maria feels a mixture of complete disbelief and guilt. Matilde and Samuel arrive, and then Abbess. However, Zofia is already gone. Matilde cries on the way back. Samuel tries to comfort her, telling her that she did everything she could. Later, the nuns perform a ceremony for Zofia. Maria arrives at the village to tell Zofia's aunt of the bad news. She breaks down in tears, trying to comfort her, Maria gives her the things Zofia made for the baby. However, the aunt is confused as there was never a baby. And then it dawns on Maria, Abbess never put the babies up for adoption. She leaves in tears. Arriving back at the convent, she confronts Abbess. However, Abbess tells her she only did what she had to and asks Maria to leave. Abbess had killed the babies to keep the nuns from being shamed. Later, Maria cries by her window, horrified at the truth she's learned. She goes to sew with the other nuns when suddenly, Irina is about to give birth. With a forceful push, the baby is successfully birthed. Maria carries the crying baby and gives it to Irina. Unfortunately, she is now initiated. Maria is washed with gloom, as she knows what will happen to the baby. At the hospital, Matilde and the other Red Cross doctors prepare to leave. At the final goodbye party, the doctors dance and drink when suddenly, Maria and another nun arrive with babies in hand. Matilde immediately helps them. While contemplating what to do, Matilde is greeted by the young boy who sold her cigarette. In the morning, the nun who recently gave birth accepts her baby. It changes her worldview, and she promises to pursue her vocation differently. Matilde arrives and tells Maria she has an idea. At the convent, while the nuns are eating, Maria and Matilde burst at the door, carrying the babies and the young children tagging along with them. The nuns stop what they're doing. Matilde tells the nuns that these young children are orphans. She argues they can just take them in, so no one will wonder where the babies came from. The nuns can raise orphans without fear. Maria and Matilde hand the babies to their mothers. And they willingly accept. Suddenly, one of the older nuns argues that Abbess has already found a family for all the babies. However, Abbess only stares at her in silence. Maria walks toward her and asks her to speak. Abbess stands up and reveals to everyone what she did. Ashamed, she leaves quietly. One of the novice nuns calls her a murderer under her breath. Matilde and Maria smile at each other while the older nun fights off her tears at their respected mother's sins. Later, the orphan children eat while the nuns smile and fondly look at their babies. Matilde drives away in the evening and sees a woman walking alone. She offers her a ride and a cigarette. Matilde learns that the woman gave her child to the convent, as she didn't know how to be a mother. Matilde smiles and drives away. Three months later, the children run around the old nun as she's walking along the hallway. Meanwhile, many people flock to see the convent, hoping to find a child they can adopt. The convent's hallways that were once filled with silence become engulfed in children's noise. And the doting would be parents' laughter. The older nun comes in to help the sickly abbess, but she hides in shame. Meanwhile, the nuns carry the babies for a photograph. While working on the other side of the world, Matilde receives a letter from Maria stating that the dark days are gone. They send her a picture of them carrying the babies, 